Hi there, my name is Gavin Shaw. Uh, I work for Campbell Scientific here in Australia and in this short little video I'm going to take you through our data logger range and just show you some of the differences between the different types of logger that we sell. Okay, we're going to start off with this one here. That's the CR1000. Uh, it's the most general purpose logger that we sell, probably the most flexible one. Uh, it is the replacement for the CR10X if you're used to our older loggers. Uh, it has 16 measurement channels on board and eight digital outputs. So those measurement channels are zero to five volt channels and the digital outputs are a zero to five volt signal that can control a relay or a pump or something like that. All right, also looking at the wiring panel there, we have this, which is a peripheral port. It allows us to connect other modules onto the CR1000 to add some functionality. One of those modules is this one here. That's the NL115. It adds an ethernet port and it adds a compact flash adapter. So it allows you to connect an ethernet cable to your logger and get it onto a local area network. Or you can add a compact flash uh, card to your logger to increase its memory. Some of the other things on the wiring panel. Over here we have two DB9 connectors, one for an RS232 port and one for a CSIO port. The CSIO port is on a lot of our loggers. Uh, it stands for Campbell Scientific Input or Output. So that is to connect only Campbell devices. Uh, things like our landline modem that we sell, um, radio modems, all sorts of Campbell peripherals. The RS232 port is a standard RS232 port. We use that to connect to laptops to download the data or to program the logger. Uh, we can also use it to connect to PLCs uh, or RTUs or those sort of things. Uh, the CR1000 will support DNP3 and it will support Modbus if you're connecting to a PLC. Alright, that's the CR1000. Let's have a look at its baby brother. The CR800. So very similar to the CR1000. Uh, same sort of measurement channels. They are 0 to 5 volt analog measurement channels, but the CR800 has less, it only has 6, whereas the CR1000 had 16. Also has some digital outputs that allow you to control pumps and relays and the like, but this only has 4, whereas the CR1000 has 8. It's also missing a peripheral port, so you can't connect an ethernet cable to this one, and you can't expand its memory with a compact flash card. Otherwise, the programming is the same, it uses the same programming language, all the same uh, instructions are supported. It supports DMP3 and it supports Modbus as well. Now for those of you who are used to the older loggers, this has replaced the CR510. This is the CR800. Okay, now in addition to the CR800, we also sell this one, the CR850. Exactly the same as the CR800, same number of channels, same programming and everything else, it's just added a keypad display. So using the keypad, you can have a look through the current measurements on the logger, uh, you can have a look through what data is being stored, you can initiate program uh, operations like measure now or store now or things like that using the keypad. All right, that's the CR850 and the CR800. All right, next logger along is the baby logger of the series. That's the CR200. Uh, and the one I have in my hands at the moment is the CR211. So they're the same logger, CR211 and CR200, but the CR211 has an inbuilt radio, hence the radio jack on the front. So you can use that radio to communicate back to a CR800 or a CR1000 base and have maybe four, of, four or five of these uh, located around the base and fields. All right, no CSIO port on this one, no peripheral port. It has an RS-232 port, but it has very limited programming compared to the CR-800. Doesn't support DNP3, but it will support Modbus, excuse me. In terms of measurement channels, it has five analog measurement channels, zero to two and a half volts this time, 
and it doesn't quite have the same accuracy that the CR800 or the CR1000 has, so a less accurate logger. But a lot cheaper than the CR800, so in the right circumstance, it can be um, very valuable. Okay, so that's the CR200 or CR211. Last one on our list is that big one there, that's the CR3000. So it's the big boy of the group, uh, it fits above the CR1000 in our scheme of loggers. It's got a lot more measurement channels, it's got a keypad display, and it's got a peripheral port. So measurement channels this time, it has 28 as opposed to 16 for the CR1000, and it has 8 digital outputs. It's got the same RS-232 port and CSIO port. Same programming language, same instructions. It can do uh, emails and FTPs and SMSs and all those same things that the CR1000 and the CR800 can do. But it does have a faster processor on board. So it can do uh, more processing in the same amount of time as the CR800 or the 1000. Okay, and if you're used to the older loggers, uh, that has replaced the CR23X. If you're used to using those older ones. Okay, so those are pretty much all the loggers that I'm going to go through uh, in this video. We sell some others, the CR5000 and the CR9000, if you've seen those in our price list. They're more expensive than the 3000, and they're generally for people who want to measure really quickly. They measure a lot faster than the CR3000. All right, and just to end off, there's a little comparison sheet uh, comparing those four loggers that I've been through, their voltage ranges, what they support and what they don't, and their scan rates, which is their measurement rate. All right, thanks very much for listening. I'll sign off now. I'll see you next time.